Circular functions. This topic is all about the application of the previously taught concept of trigonometry in creating graphs involving the unit circle. Now that probably just sounds like a whole lot of gobbledygook, so let's break things down into a little, little tiny edible pieces. And one of them uh, that I did mention was a thing called trigonometry. Now you might remember that word being bandied about at starting of year nine and then again at year 10, but maybe it's a good time to just remember what it is that uh, trigonometry is all about. Well, it's about the study of angles, particularly in right angle triangles. It's used usually in conjunction with Pythagoras' theorem. So this is all very geometry based. So I've got here an opening problem to help us just rejig some of our trigonometric understanding. Well, I want you to draw a square distance one unit, centimetres, miles, whatever you wish, and cut it in uh, half along the diagonal, state the angles of the triangle, use Pythagoras' theorem to find the diagonal length, and then find all of the trigonometric ratios. Well, there is a buffet of things to do in this particular question, so let's go and uh, make that a little bit easier, shall we? Uh, so I've drawn my square. Look at how well I've drawn that. It's just magically appeared. I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and label my square and then from there I'm going to draw all of the things that I know. So it's been told it's a distance of one unit. So if it's a square that means all the sides are one unit. So I'm going to label this with a one, label this with a one, a one and a one. I then now have to use uh, to cut this in half along the diagonal. So I'll get myself, oh, maybe it's rather groovy pink will do me nicely. So if I get myself here, cut along there. And then I can use my little white marker here to just erase, gently erase the rest of my square, like so. Okay. So now I also need to put in the angles. Now, if I have a square, what's the total uh, number of angles that I have? Well, I've got four angles, and what do they all add up to? Well, if you remember from your ancient geometry for squares, all of the angles are going to be the same because all sides are the same, so all angles are the same, and they all have to add up to 360 degrees. So, because all quadrilateral, quadrilateral internal angles add up to 360 degrees. So therefore, I definitely know that the one unchopped angle there is going to be 90 degrees. But then the other two angles, what are they going to be? Well, I chopped those angles right in half. So that means that this corner is half of 90, it's 45 degrees. And then the other half is 45 degrees. I realize also I drew a little box in that corner and I should also clarify that don't forget that when you see a little square in that corner, that means 90 degrees. So uh, how do I know that I could be just making these things up and things like that? Well, remember a triangle's internal angles should all add up to 180. So therefore 90 plus 45 plus 45, Two lots of 45 is 90, 90 plus 90, 180. So we are all cooking with gas or whatever other metaphorical fuels you wish. So let's go and have a look at filling in all of these other details. So I needed to find the distance of the diagonal. So my lovely pretty pink line that I've got there. And I'm doing to use Pythagoras. So how do I use Pythagoras' theorem? Well, if you remember, Pythagoras' theorem should be c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared where this side is A, that side is B, and this side is C. Honestly, the A and B could be either of those sides, but you know, I'm just labeling them as they are. You could put A at the bottom, B at the side, whatever's your poison. So we're going to go and fill this in, one squared plus one squared. So this is equal to one squared is one times one, which is two. So we're going to do one squared plus one squared. So that's going to be one times one, which is one. And one squared, carry the one. 
it's definitely going to be 1 as well, which should be equal to 2. And therefore, uh, that's c squared. We need c on its own. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of that, and that gets us the root 2 units. So it's going to be distance of root 2. Now, the next part of the question was asking about trigonometric ratios. So what does this mean? Well, this means that uh, we have some certain angle-related relationships where we have some sides divided by some other sides. So the first one you might remember is a thing called sine. So sine of an angle. And if you don't know the angle, our go-to symbol for the unknown angle is theta. And theta looks like this, looks like a little upside down Q. So sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So what does that mean? Well, opposite is one of the short sides and the hypotenuse, if you remember, not to be mistaken with a hippopotamus, but a hypotenuse is the longest side, our sloping side here, hypotenuse. I feel like I've spelled that wrong. I'm sure that you can correct me if I have. So the sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, or otherwise the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. So we have a few different options here. So we can start with the 45 degrees uh, the over here. So then we've got, in fact, what I might do is I might recolor this as one color. So we'll go 45 degrees here. And then we'll label this side in a different color. Uh, I might put this in a very lovely dark blue. So this is also 45 degrees. And remember, we can't do any trigonometric identities with that 90 degrees. You can't do sine 90 degrees or things like that. Not with this triangle. We'll talk about doing sine 90 degrees later. But we are just going to tackle these two sides. So. So I'm going to start with the bottom angle, the one in green. Apologies to my colorblind viewers here. So that's sine 45 degrees, which is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite to that 45 degrees is the one. So we'll put one there, the hypotenuse being the root two. And there is my trigonometric ratio. As a fun fact, if you need to rationalize the denominator, we can do a little trick here. Now, what does rationalize the denominator mean? Well, mathematicians don't like little divided by square roots. They don't like to divide by a square root because irrational numbers, that is any number that you cannot square root. We can't do the square root of two. If you put it in the calculator, you'll find that it has infinite amount of decimal places. Mathematicians don't like to divide by something that has infinite number of decimal places. It just doesn't work terribly nicely. So, because it's like trying to, uh, if you can imagine from a division point of view, go back to primary school days, or like if you've got five, uh, if you've got 15 cakes and you need to share them amongst uh, five kids, well, in this case, it would be like saying I've got 15 cakes and divided by 7.89246 infinite, infinite kids, then it gets a little bit tricky. So, Technically speaking, mathematicians don't like this at all. So to do that, what they do to rationalize the denominator is they just multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of the bottom. So we divide. Because technically speaking, if you time something by root two over root two, that's actually just times it by one. So it's a little neat little trick that we like to do. And that's gonna be equal to root two. Now, generally, in a maths methods context, both answers are acceptable, although the rationalized denominator one is a lot nicer and mathematically better grammar, if you like. So, uh, that's sine 45 degrees from that end. Uh, if I go with the other side now, which was in my dark blue here, so we'll erase my little dotted line so we can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, we can do sine of 45 degrees. So that's this side here. So that's again opposite over hypotenuse, so one over root two, which again will equal to root two over two. Excellent. So then, so that's sine. So hopefully you remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Then we've got another little friend that we call cosine, often shortened to cos. 
uh, much like the letters, cos degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is the side that is next to the angle, or the angle is sitting on top of it. So for example, with the 45 degrees, if I start with this one, so cos 45, the, the bottom 45 degrees, this is the adjacent here, and the hypotenuse is still the same. And so that other side, the side labelled A, would be the opposite. So this will be 1 over root 2, which again is root 2 over 2. And if I change it the other way around to the other angle, cos of 45 degrees, yep, so it's going to be the same thing, except now this side is the adjacent, and it's going to be 1 over root 2. And again, that uh, can be simplified to, or rationalised, to root 2 over 2. So there's cosine, a nice friendly reminder. And tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So for tan 45 degrees, so the opposite here is A. So that's the opposite. So in fact, I, oh, I could label it like that so you can see. So this would be A over B. So this is 1 over 1, which is 1. Can't do much simplifying than that. And then the other 45 degrees, the one at the top there in the dark blue, well, that's going to be B over A, 1 over 1, which is 1. So there is our 10.